I'm Dr. Crystal Brimer. I own a private practice in Wilmington, North Carolina, and 90% of what I do there is dry eye. Dry eye disease in its truest form is a lack of water or oil in the tear film. But in reality, it's not just dry eye disease most of the time. Instead, it, it typically consists of some variation or combination of underlying surface issues. It can have many different presentations and induce a host of symptoms. Could be a lack of water or oil, sure, but also allergy, inflammation, bacteria, systemic issues, environmental issues. A more accurate term is ocular surface disease. Now, from the patient's perspective, they don't care what you call it or why it's happening. They just want relief. Our job is to differentiate between the underlying issues and determine all their contributing factors, and then determine the appropriate treatments that will bring them relief. And the key to true relief is to treat them all at once. Because even if you're successful at suppressing one element, if you leave the others unattended, it'll be back. Well, dry eye is challenging for multiple reasons. Obviously, there's, there's not just one type of dry eye. It can have many underlying causes, complex presentations, and varied symptoms. In addition, treatment is often delayed because patients ignore the symptoms initially, and then they tend to self-medicate with over-the-counter drops. Worse yet, these habits are sometimes perpetuated by their doctor. And when patients don't get the relief they want, they move on to the doctor down the street. Without really breaking down the underlying etiology, this trial and error approach, it becomes a frustration to both the doctor and the patient. And quite frankly, even when the doctor does have a system to determine the underlying diagnosis, there's still major challenges. Treating dry eye can take extra chair time for the doctor, and patient compliance can be hit or miss. And any lack of compliance will be devastating to the outcome, because ultimately, compliance is the critical piece to success. Compliance creates positive outcomes, and the positive outcomes generate referrals, practice growth, and revenue. And I believe the secret to that compliance is a compelling patient education. I use the Crystal Tear Screening Report on every patient now. It takes less than two minutes to acquire, and it gives me a snapshot assessment as to the patient's water, oil, and inflammatory status. The report offers the patient a baseline understanding of their current scenario, and it reminds them of what to look for in the future. Now, if they already have issues and symptoms, it opens the conversation surrounding the need to return for a dry eye evaluation. And if they don't, it plants a seed for future follow-up and discussion. Because if down the road throughout the year they start having symptoms and I didn't mention it, then they're gonna think I missed it. I want them to know what to look for and where to come when it happens. If a patient comes in with complaints, I don't refuse to treat her, but I only treat what's most obvious at that visit. I explain that there are many possible causes to her symptoms, lack of water, oil, allergy, inflammation, bacteria, lid function, something systemic, something environmental. I tell her that in order to truly bring her long-term relief, we need to spend time asking the right questions and breaking down all the possible causes to her symptoms. I show her some compelling photos with my 5M that, that demonstrate the level of detail I can obtain, and I ask her to return so we can do multiple tests in every category and then pair it with treatments that I know will work. So again, I tell her that for today, we'll initiate a treatment for what's most obvious, but that I want to schedule a dry eye eval within two weeks. We can assess her, her response to the treatment, but I stress that if we stop here and we only treat the obvious, it's merely going to serve as a Band-Aid because we need to treat all the outstanding categories at once. Even if we're successful at treating one category, if we leave the others outstanding, she's not gonna get true relief, and eventually the one category we fixed will regress. So for example, if she's got bacteria on her lid margin and we treat inflammation but not the bacteria, those toxins are gonna get into the tear film, it's gonna be toxic to the corneal surface, the inflammation will be right back. Hands down, what encourages patients to return the most is seeing their ocular surface photos on the 5M. And when they do return for their dry eye eval, this is also what will inspire their compliance with the recommended treatments. It starts with the patient bringing in an extensive questionnaire that I've created, and this questionnaire nearly eliminates the need for an in-office history. 
This is key in controlling the time allotted for my dry eye eval. Ultimately, my goal is to assess the patient's level of water, oil, allergies, inflammation, bacteria, lid function, systemic, environmental conditions. And more importantly, I need that patient to be able to visualize this and understand all these elements so that he or she is compliant with my recommended treatments. For this reason, the vast majority of my exam is done with the 5M. We perform tear meniscocyte to assess the water component, a non-invasive tear breakup time and interferometry to assess the oil, tear film dynamic to assess the tear quality, and bulbar redness to assess its effect on the surface and any secondary inflammation. Topography for any corneal dystrophy or degeneration, and then we, we collect extensive images and videos with lysamine green and fluorescein dyes. I finish with my biography. And at this point, the only thing left to do in my exam is debridement of the lid margin and expression, and I do that at the slit lamp. Once the process is completed though, I rank my, my contributing issues according to their severity, and then I check the boxes as to what treatments I want for that patient. And then comes the most important part of all. I pull up my nine picture collage on the 5M, and this allows me to walk the patient through her story. I remind her of our goal for the day. It's to break down the underlying causes to her symptoms, and then I show her the water, the oil, the lack of color in the tear film, the quick breakup time, the partial blinks, her mybography, the debris in the tears, the redness, the staining. I equate each of these to the categories we discussed at the beginning, and then as we walk through it, I describe the treatment we're gonna do for each one. The patient leaves with a palpable hope for relief, a better understanding and a drive to be compliant. And compliance is what creates the outcomes. The outcomes generate the referrals, the practice growth, and the revenue. The keratograph is my patient flow. I use it on almost every patient. If it's a follow-up, I use tear meniscocyte to assess the water level, interferometry to show how much oil's in the tear film, and then tear film dynamic and bulbar redness as a reference for inflammation. I'm then able to assess the progress from one visit to the next. It speeds their understanding, it offers encouragement regarding treatment success, and it generates buy-in to my treatment plan. Now, at first, it may seem like taking these few images would lengthen my exam, but honestly, they take less than two minutes to acquire, and by doing this, it actually shaves minutes off my follow-up. When I can actually show the patient, then I spend less time talking. The buy-in is much greater, and the patient has fewer questions. As an added bonus, taking these external photos is a billable procedure. The crystal tear report is a key element in this. It makes an impact on the patient, it helps justify the out-of-pocket expense of the dry eye eval, and it shows them our genuine interest in education. It helps them understand their status, as well as the purpose of each treatment. So again, it cuts down on my in-office education time, and it ensures that the patient has written instructions. I also attach it to my follow-up letter to the referring doctor to help generate additional referrals. When I look back at my previous attempts at patient education, I have to laugh, and at the same time, it makes me thankful for how I do it now, and realize that patient education is what I changed in my practice, and that's exactly what got me where I am. I was using these laminated diagrams of what normal meibomian glands looked like, and then for the rest of it, I was just trying to describe it without anything. <laughs> that seems pretty barbaric now, compared to what I do with my 5M. Recently, I held a dry eye retreat at my office and the doctors watched me with a, a new patient. They labeled it as magical. I laughed, but you know, it really is. It's magical for the patient because for the first time, they have a glimpse and an understanding of what's happening and how complex it is. But even more importantly, they have hope. More hope than they've ever had that this time, it will be different because they finally will get results they've wanted They've finally found a doctor that understands and is looking at their dry eye differently. And this hope is palpable. I see it nearly every time. And granted, they may have been referred to me by a doctor with much greater training than mine, but 
The patient perception is that I'm the one that can change their outcome. And with this device, I can show them exactly why I want to incorporate a particular treatment. They understand and they do it, all because I was able to show them. I pull up this collage of the nine most important images and videos, and I'm able to walk her through the story, show her the water, the oil, the allergy, the inflammation, the bacteria, the lid function. And when a patient sees a video in which their eyes don't close all the way during a blink, or sees how, how her glands rank on a sliding scale of normal and abnormal glands, there's no words I can say that compares to this. Or being able to use that non-invasive breakup time to explain how her dry eyes affecting her vision. Or show her the debris in the tear film, the makeup along the lid margin. Use interferometry to show the lack of color and oil. Not only am I unable to see that at the slit lamp, without the 5M, what a missed opportunity for patient education, progress assessment, and frankly, ongoing buy-in to my treatment plan. I owe the majority of my patient compliance to my 5M. When a patient is able to visualize a particular problem and why they need a specific treatment, it removes any semblance of sales pitch from my exam room, and that's exactly how I want it. I simply explain the problem, discuss the options for treatment, and then tell them what I know works. The patient has every reason to believe me because she can see it for herself. And this creates genuine buy-in to the plan and loyalty to both the treatment and the doctor over time. Once the patient has seen her own issues on the 5M, it also creates this gap in perceived care if she chooses to go somewhere else. So it basically ruins her for dry eye care from any other doctor. What I didn't expect is that being able to show the patient on the 5M has changed the way I talk to the patient and how much I have to say, which has made my job exponentially easier. Patients end up with a better understanding and this greater understanding and buy-in has generated additional revenue from procedures and ongoing product sales that we wouldn't have had otherwise. And of course, this compliance is what led to the positive outcomes, which led to the referrals from both patients and physicians alike. It's easy to count up the $99 charges for my dry eye evaluations, and it's easy to count up the external photos I bill for during my follow-ups. It's also easy to overlook the residual income that's generated from the patient's buy-in to the treatment plan. The reason patients buy the products I sell or proceed with the procedures I recommend is because of what they have seen on the 5M. You'll also see referrals from patients and doctors alike simply because you have the technology and the perception of a higher level of dedication to dry eye care. My 5M paid for itself almost immediately. We put a six foot sign on the sidewalk that said free dry eye screenings and it got attention daily. I can't tell you how many weeks it took for me to pay for the investment, but it was weeks and not months. As soon as I saw what it could do and how the patients embraced it, I used it on everyone and it was paid for in no time. The story to my dry eye success is simple. I spend the time breaking down the underlying causes of the patient's issues and then I spend a few minutes explaining their story using their own photos from the 5M. This is what induces compliance. Compliance generates those positive outcomes and the outcomes lead to the patient and doctor referrals. That equates to practice growth and revenue. For me, the 5M is the cornerstone to this equation and I would not have excelled in dry eye without it.